consider like what it is to, to, to believe in a, in, in a God, a Christian God. Um, one, of the first, one of the first things is to be humble. You're supposed to be humble before God. But any of us object to living in such a way that, that we're humble. Also, although we're living humbly, we're also going to live um, confidently because we believe, because there's a belief, um, there's a belief in, in an afterlife, there's a belief that there's a larger plan. So you can live humbly, you can, and then you can also live confidently. You can, there's a balancing act between these two. You don't live arrogantly. Um, you live in such a way that you believe that everyone is made in God's image, and so therefore you take care of everybody around you. There's, a, there's charity, there's kindness. And of course, the, the overarching thing there is love. And so there's a way of living in such a way that uh, live as though you believe in God. In other words, you might... Maybe if you're a Christian, you live these things because you think, if I don't, I'm going to be in trouble. Maybe if you live this way without a belief in God, if you, maybe you're an atheist, but you still believe, if I don't live humbly, confidently, with charity, kindness, and love, that there's going to be trouble for me also. Because you recognize that living differently from this creates a great deal of trouble in your life. If you're not humble, you're going to get put down. You're going to get, you're going to get put in your place. If you're not confident, you're not going to take, um, take the risks to do things in life. And you're going to miss out quite a bit. Um, if you're not charitable, then you're missing out on, on your deeper connection to humanity all around you. If you're not living kindly, then you're, you're, you're cruel, and you're going to have to live with the consequences of that. And if you live without love, well, I mean, life is almost a mistake if you live without love. So there's a way of living in such a way, religi religiously, even though you're not religious. There's a way of, you know, and if you are, fine, and if you're not, fine. But if you look at, at really what the, the essence of it is, you would find that the way that you would behave, that the courage to, to exist in these ways, hopefully is the self that appears even if your faith in a God disappears. Because certainly at the very least, as we said, we can make the world a better place, at least don't make it a worse place, and at the very, very least, I guess, make it a neutral place. But this is kind of a formula for how it is to make the world a better place. And, and so what is it to, to make the world a worse place? It isn't just to live the opposite of these, it's to live without these. Like what is it, for example, um, to, if, if you're not going to be humble, it's to live without being humble, which of course is going to be to live with arrogance. Um, to live without confidence means that you're going to live timidly. To live without charity means you're going to live selfishly. To live without kindness means you're going to live cruelly. And to live without love I think we might actually say is really no life at all. Yeah. Well, we say love is. How do you describe love? <laughs> That's a lot of people who represent it like differently. Like, you can put love as discrimination, and you can also put love as something that you want to take care of. Yeah. Um, so, if you say that living without love, couldn't it, couldn't it be also interpreted as living without discriminating people? Like, accepting everybody? Is accepting everybody loving? Is it, I'm sorry, is it loving to accept everybody? No. Probably not. If you're living in such a way that that you're, that you're not only destructive to yourself, but destructive to everybody around you, that it wouldn't be loving to accept you that way. It's like if you're, if you're living in such a way that you're not kind, it wouldn't be loving for me to accept you as you are. I can, and there's a, there's a line there. In other words, I can accept you as you are and say, Man, I just wish that you weren't this. I can still show kindness towards you, even though you're not showing kindness. This is part of the problem, I would, I would suggest to you, that people who, who, like if I, if people will say to me, well, I don't, need a, I don't need that kind of a conception of morality to be a moral person. And if I ask that question, well, then why would you be kind? You know, are you really a kind person? Oh, yeah, I'm very kind. And I always turn my head sideways and go, are you really kind? Well, I mean, I'm kind to people who are kind to me. Well, then you're not really a kind person. You're a reactive person. You're responsive to people around you, but you, you are not that thing. What you are is determined by what's going on around you. There is no you. There's only a you that exists depending on circumstances. And so I'm only kind if people are kind to me. No, you need to be kind. Well, I'm only, I don't mean charitable. I don't want to, I mean, I don't you just you know, give homeless people money because they're just going to get drunk and, use, and, and buy drugs. Not like you guys, right? <laughs> right, right? Okay. So maybe, maybe we should be charitable despite what people do with it, because that's more about you than it is about other people. 
maybe we should be confident to, regardless of the circumstances because again it's about my character it's not about what's happening around me it's about what's happening inside of me maybe I should be humble and again that's you know not, even if you're the best person in in the room that doesn't mean that that you're the best in the world like the smartest person in the room is still just a person the smartest person in the room is still just a person so now that takes us to your question of how to answer what is this thing discrimination <laughs> discrimination yes we must hate all races and creeds <laughs> questions <laughs> i got it I'm answering your question, Michael. <laughs> Agape. This is a type of love that is not based on sentiment. It's not based off of emotion. It's something that you do because it's the right thing. This is you. You don't do this because someone's nice to you. You're kind. Be, you're, you're you're kind because you love them, not because they deserve it. But it's an action that you do. It's a verb. I show love towards towards everybody. You know, and that doesn't mean that you're sentimentally attached to everybody, but it means that you live as though you are. This is the thing, and this is a hard thing to be, man. Like any of you guys have, um, um, I've talked about this in the, in the past. So you've got these different forms of love. You've got eros, which is like a, uh, a physical attraction. You find somebody attractive. You meet somebody, and you're like, oh, they're really, they're really attractive. As we get the word erotic from that. You've also got this other type of love, philo. Philo is kind of like, like love between friends. You, have, you, know, you love your friend, your friend loves you, and so you guys get along, and so you, you, know, you, you take care of them because they're your friend. Yeah. Does the word platonic come from that? Uh, the word platonic comes from Plato. Ah. Yeah, and Plato talks about the, the various forms of love. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And you've got the other one, Sterge. Sterge is a type of love between family members, between you know, your, your close family. And then the final form of love is this one. So your love goes, your love flows in these directions. And here's what it looks like. You meet somebody, and they're really attractive. And, so, and, and you, they think you're attractive. And so you're always saying, yeah, again, there's that, there's that, emo, there's that, what's called it? That kind of like physical attraction between the two people. And it's, it's very, it's very sentimental. It's very emotional based. And then after you guys hang out for a while, you start to be, you actually become friends. You like each other, and you, you, know, you like them as a person. Um, you can actually go and hang out with them and, and, and go do things with them. And then you, you, you kind of like the same way that you would hang out with one of your friends. After a while, you're together for so long that you transition to this thing. You become family. Maybe quite literally, if you get married. But you become family in the sense of if they invite you, they're obviously inviting the other person as well. You start, uh, everyone thinks of you, and you think of yourself, more importantly, as a unit, as one person. There is no, there, here there is no I, there's only an us. So you're giving up a sense of yourself. And then as you go from there, you transition into this thing. Now, what's important for us to recognize is that when you're here, again, it's high emotion. Once you show up here in Philo, you have that deep, you have that friendship, but now you're kind of hanging out wearing sweats and stuff like that. You're not getting all dressed up to hang out with the other person because you kind of accept each other as you are. And that means that you're going to lose some of this. But what you're gaining is something so much deeper than just this. How many people in the world around you are attractive? Lots and lots and lots if you really stop and look. Unless you're incredibly picky, but by and large. But how many people, how many of those, of those hundreds of people or thousands of people that you see could you actually hang out with and be friends with? That's much deeper. And then, when you hang out there for a while, you then move into this thing here, Sturgis, which means that you don't have very much of this at all. You know, I don't know, you, you hear you know, the person farts in front of you or something, or they leave the door open when you're going to the bathroom. It, there's, there's less of this going on, and there's also less of this friendship. Maybe the person starts to, you know, not annoy you, but, you know, like, you've seen the real them, you know, and you're not as enamored of them as you used to be. But you've got something way deeper, which is a family connection. That person is part of you, and you are them. There is no again. There's no more I. There's only us at this point. And that, and, and you might look back and go, "Oh man, where did some of that old spark go?" Which is a reasonable question to ask. It's not completely gone. There's still a little bit there. But this is what you really are. This is the. Re this is what you really become. And you recognize that there's a beauty in this. And again, there's a little bit less friendship. Maybe, maybe you aren't as like, nice to each other. Actually, nice to each other. It sounds bad. But you're more direct with each other here. You know, that's a terrible haircut you've got. 
you know, oh my God, why why you you bought those shoes, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? If you're, you're now once you go from there and your family, now you hang out and you're and you're this. Maybe there isn't very much of this left. Maybe there's not much of this left. And there's a little bit less of this, but that's okay because the thing that you gain instead is something that is. Maybe someone can help me with this. It's long suffering. It doesn't keep accounts. It's patient. It's kind. It forgives all things. Yeah. That's um, Paul talking in the, in the letter. First Corinthians 13. If you guys ever go to a, a wedding and they'll read that, they'll say, "Love is kind. Love is long suffering. Love is patient." And they'll be sitting there holding hands and like. Love is kind. Love is that's the word that's being used there. Not that one. Not that one. Not that one. That's what Paul's talking about. So you could say instead, non-emotional duty-based action is kind. Non-emotional duty-based action is long suffering. And it doesn't. It doesn't sound as romantic. But my goodness, what more do you want in life? This is this is your permanent thing. And sometimes you'll come across people who can maintain more elements of this. But any of you guys got those grandparents or someone who's together and you're like, oh, why do you guys hang out together? You guys, don't you guys hate each other? And they're like, because that's what you do. Because we promised we would. It's a promise that you make. It's, a, it's not just a promise that you make. It's a promise that you fulfill. You follow through with it. Yeah. That's the kind of love that when you, when you look at religious texts, that's what they're talking about. When it says that God loves us, it doesn't say that God eroses or follows or stargazes us. It says, God, I got pays us. That's the kind of divine thing that we're looking for. This is the kind of, of love that we... And, and by the way, if you understand that, and if you understand that this transition is a beautiful thing, you don't get this American... Uh, I should, well, whatever, I said already. You don't get this American mindset of, I don't know, it's like we've been together for 15 years. It's like, I love them, but I don't, I'm not like in love with... Uh, does that make any sense? And then we, your best friend Susan goes, yeah, I feel the same way about me and so-and-so. The spark is gone. That's because you're expecting to have everything at once. You can't. You can't. You, you can't have it all. But you can have something better. You can't have it all. But you can get what you need. And this is the thing in life that people strive towards because we need this. Being at this point here and then finding yourself sighing and holding your, your, your chin in your hand because some of this isn't, isn't there anymore is to, uh, it's, like, it's like to get pissed off because someone hands you a million dollars, but they give you all 20s. <laughs> oh, but it's so heavy. <laughs> you know? It's like, yeah, it, it, and I understand the want for 20s because it's hard to, you know, not, not everywhere it takes $100 bills. But my goodness, you have to realize that you have something that, that, that very few people are, not, are able to attain. But if you recognize at this stage here, and you're like, part of the excitement here is going to be, this person seems really interesting. This person seems really exciting. Maybe we're going to get to this point. And then you get to that point, and it's like, wow, this is so cool we got here. I wonder if this person is the one. I wonder if that's, I wonder if that's going to take us there. Now contrast that with English. Love. I love my mom. I love buffalo wings. I love my significant other. Hopefully you love your mom and your significant other differently, unless you're from Kentucky. <laughs> but we've only got that one word. I mean, look at Spanish. Te quiero y te amo. You've got, at least there's two words now to start to describe it. In Greek, you've got these four words, and in some languages, you have a seven. So it multiplies out. And the more words we have, the more precise we can be with what it is that we're feeling and thinking. Because you can't think in a language you don't master. So once we're able to master this kind of a language, this like sort of an understanding, now we can expect it. Wow, I'm going to go from here to here. Rather than if you have no understanding of this, we're left to wonder, like, am I in love or am I loving? Or is I, oh, does that make any sense? And then you turn to your friend, and your friend says, just do what makes you happy. <laughs> Thank you so much. And then you ruin your life because you seek this when you had this. Believe that. Yeah. Is there, is there a correct form of love? A correct form? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What you're not looking for are the because because again, what is it to to, to live uh, to live badly? It's the opposite of the positives. 
what is it to, 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 to love badly, to live, the, to, to live without these things? Sorry not, to, sorry, not to live the opposite of these things, sorry, sorry, let me correct that. To live without these things. If you live without, without confidence, you're living with cowardice. If you're living without charity, you're living with selfishness. So to love without these things is, is, is the bad way to love. Because now you love an object. You love an object. It's like people who go out and they, and they, and they, you know, they want to be with somebody just because they're attractive. Then you're kind of forcing yourself to stay here. And that might be fine. But understand that when you do that, the more time you spend with this, the less time you're going to be able to develop into this. Unless, of course, that person can do that. Yeah. What makes you stop loving someone? What's that? What makes you stop loving someone? Me? <laughs> <laughs> you're going to ask me this week, huh? <laughs> I think that what Plato might say is when you find out that the thing you love is not the thing that's there. In other words, this might be a silly way of putting it, but let's say that you fall in love with somebody um, because they're honest and that person turns out has been lying to you about a bunch of things. This was the thing that you loved about them. And once that thing is no longer there, neither is the love for that person. There might be other things. In other words, there might be like seven or eight characteristics that you love about the person. And some of us are, are such that if you find, if, if you lose one of those seven or eight things, you can still love. It's like, you know, some of them there's going to be a deal breaker. And some people, if they lose any of those things, and that's going to have a lot to do with you as an individual. How forgiving are you? How understanding are you? Um, when you get into a relationship, are people going to lie to you? Oh yeah, probably. They're going to, uh, I guess you might say they're going to embellish. They're going to make themselves out to be, to be um, better than what they are. I try very hard to, to go the opposite direction. Put all the worst characteristics up front. <laughs> then, then anything that you do after that, positively, is just extra credit. I joke about that. Keep the bar nice and low. You know, then maybe you can, you can hop over the bar. But the thing that would probably make that happen, you know, make what you're talking about happen, is that it turns out that the thing that you love wasn't act, they're not actually that thing. If that makes sense. It's clear here, I'm not sure if it's clear coming this way. Yeah. Others? Yeah. I guess so, sorry, so I guess what I would say, therefore, is be authentic. Sometimes you can't walk back from it. He also didn't trust poets. He said all poets are liars. Are we? Kind of. Yeah. So I tell you girls, if you come across a guy who's a poet, actually buy the guess out of you. Run. And if you come across a musician, run. And if he's a poet and a musician, it's too late. <laughs> It's already too late. What it means when someone says that they don't know how to love? They don't know how to love? Yeah. It's probably true. Just because they, the other loves you in a different way. Yeah. Maybe the way, that they, maybe the way that you love somebody is Sterge, and the way they love you is Eros. Or you love them as Agape, but they love you as Philo. Sometimes the, 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 the tune just doesn't fit the chords, you know? In other words, maybe, maybe with more time that person would grow into this. Or maybe the person's putting their own, they're putting their own walls in the way, so they never will get to this point. Because there's a danger here. I mean, there's, by the way, there's a danger in any of these things. But some of the dangers just don't appear until later. If you stay stuck on this, what ends up happening is that you're going to miss a lot of really, uh, uh, a lot of really excellent opportunities with people. People are willing to uh, want to move forward, but you're like, I'm not trying to take anything too seriously. You know, when is, the, when is the, the best relationship of your life ever going to come along? And I don't know. I have former students who met here, as t I'm thinking of right now, two people particularly. They're, they're married, and they have their first baby on the way. They met here as 10th graders, and they're in their late 20s now, I think. So they've been here for, what, 10 years? No, no, 12, 13 years or so. Um, I, know, I actually know several former students who, who, who did that. I've got two former students who, um, who just met up recently. 
they, they graduated like 10 years ago or something like that. Eight years, no, no, sorry, nine years ago. And they disconnected recently. And they knew of each other here, but they never met. And now they're all together and they're all in love and, and they're all squishy on, on Instagram. You know? Um, you know one. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's a neat thing, but when, you, when, when does that thing come along? Probably whenever you're open for it. And if you, if you find yourself stuck here and you're like, I'm not going to get involved in anything too, interest, in anything too serious, maybe they're the right one to just slip past you. Or maybe if you're the person who wants to jump straight from here to here, you're jumping over this important step of development. And that this is not going to forgive you for jumping over that step because you have to develop. Some people try to rush through these things as fast as possible. And I know someone like this, that she rushes through things as fast as possible because she's concerned about impermanence. And so she's rushing to the, to the permanent thing right away. She goes right from here to here. And, and is missing so much in between. You know? And unfortunately for her, she, she's let the right ones slip past. <coughs> Probably more than once. <coughs> so is there a right one? No, there are right ones. So what you have to learn how to do is, is to, first off, you have to be aware of these stages and these steps. But it's hard because you have to sort yourself out, and you've got to sort yourself out with a person who's also sorted out themselves. And some people are just so damaged, and, and, and not just damaged, but they wallow in their own damage. I just sit there and I, you know, scratch my chin and frown and, you know, I'm not worth anything. Are you worth anything? Probably not. Probably not. I have a, a guitar and I got damaged, long story short. And is that guitar worth anything? Yes. To who? You. To me. The guitar itself is not valuable. But man, if, maybe you're not valuable. But the fact that somebody would put love into you is what makes you valuable. If I put a thousand, if I'm sorry, if I put six hundred dollars into fixing this guitar, its value would go from whatever it's worth now, maybe three hundred bucks, to over two thousand dollars. If I just put like five, six hundred bucks into fixing it up, sometimes the amount of love that a person can put into you can make you worth. It's a silly question to ask, <laughs> because you become invaluable. It can't be calculated. But sometimes we resist it. You know, it's kind of like I said before, a hard thing about forgiveness. A lot, for a lot of us, it's easy to, to, to give forgiveness, but for a lot of us, it's difficult to receive forgiveness. For a lot of us, it's easy for us to give love, but it's hard for us to accept love, to receive love. And so, uh, however much love you get, I guess it's going to be, de be determined by how big of a container you are, how much you're willing to receive. Some of us are a thimble, will receive just a thimble of love, and that's very difficult to, to believe in yourself. Some people are a pitcher. Some people are an absolute ocean of love. I know someone like that. An absolute ocean of love. And they, they're, they're able to receive all of it. My cat Theodore is like that. <laughs> I know somebody else who's like that as well. An absolute ocean. They'll receive as much as you'll pour in. Um, but you have to be willing to accept it. So maybe that goes back to that question of how do you overcome doubt? Here's how you overcome, yeah, I'm sorry, doubt, doubt in yourself, doubt in your, in your intuitions. You have to just, you have to gird yourself up and just do it. I think this is the best choice. Go. <laughs> Rather than, I think this is the best choice. Maybe I should consider, no, do it. Boom, go. And what's the worst that happens? It doesn't work out. But you're going to find out it probably is going to work out. Your intuitions are there for a reason. Your intuitions are there for a reason. Your intuitions are speaking to you at an unconscious level that your mind is not recognizing. I'll tell you a story about that after I stop the video, just because it'll be outside the scope of, of, of this. But I've explained it before to, to other pla in other places. But you have to just, you have to, the way that you overcome that doubt of believing in yourself, on your, uh, with, with, especially with regards to your judgment, is you just have to take a risk and just do it. Oh, but it's hard for me to. Oh, it's hard for me to. <laughs> Everything that's worthwhile is hard to do. Some of you still have your heads up. I imagine that's very hard to do if I've been, since I've been talking for like 40 minutes, it feels like. We'll see how long it is in just a minute. You know, everything in life that's worthwhile is hard. Otherwise, everybody would do it. You know? name, name, name something in life that, that you want to do that's, that, that's not hard. And you might say like, uh, eating ice cream isn't hard. Oh, it will be. 
<laughs> Keep eating it, it will be. And so, you know, let's see who shows up when all those anxieties and all of those doubts, all of those things happen. Let's see who shows up. Hopefully it's this person. Hopefully when people are, are, are not humble and, and they lack confidence and they're, they're selfish and they're, they're cruel, hopefully this is the person in you who still shows up. Because sometimes that's what is necessary to turn a person around, is to get this from somebody. Maybe you're that person. I imagine some of you are that person. And you're just waiting for someone to come along and tell you the right thing or to love you in just the right way. And that can make a significant difference in your life. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Because it also means that you could be that person to somebody else. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques?